How's it going everybody? Squeegee Don Toy here and today I'm going to be going into a tutorial on texturing in Unity. To begin texturing in Unity however we need to set our object up in Blender. So let's pop into Blender and here I have a simple um, down flat down ledge that will have a grass planter up the middle. So I have modeled this already but you can kind of see what I've gone with. There is an edge loop around this edge here to separate this upper section from this lower section of the ledge. I'm going to have this be brick and this is going to be just a great concrete. And then I want this to be grass. First things first, we are going to create a new material and I'm going to call this one grass. Now I'm going to unselect the use nodes button. I'm going to set my base color to something that looks kind of grass like. And as you can see, it's going to turn the whole object the color of grass. I'm essentially using this green color, not necessarily to the texture of this object, but label for Unity to understand what parts of this object I want to be grass. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this plus again to create another material index. Create new. And this one I'm going to call bricks. Once again, do select use nodes so that we can see it in our multiple shading settings. And I'm just going to choose a color of brick. And I'm going to go ahead and just press A. And I'm going to make everything look like bricks. And then I'm going to go ahead and reselect these that I want to be grass. And I can hit assign. Well, I have those selected and I have grass selected. And now we have this is labeled as grass. And this is labeled as bricks. And then I want the rest of this to be concrete. So I'll add a new object or a new material. Call that concrete. And I'm going to go ahead and select everything that I want to be concrete on this object. And now that I've selected what I want to be concrete, I can select concrete, assign. And I can go here and once again we can adjust our concrete material. So that's all we really need to do as far as these materials go. The next thing is going to be UV unwrapping. So I'm going to go up here to this bar, I'm going to click on the UV editing tab. And now I can go ahead and unwrap my object. I personally use smart unwrapping 90% of the time because I don't really know how to unwrap to be honest. At least not that effectively, it takes me a very long time. But what we're going to do is we're going to unwrap this object depending on what material it's using. So I can click on my grass material and click select and it'll select everything's grass. I can do the same with bricks and I can do the same with concrete and we can deselect as well. But for stars I'm going to select everything as grass and I'm going to press U to bring up my UV mapping and I'm going to press smart UV project. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. If we enable this I can kind of see what I have selected over here in my UV area but that's not crazy important right now. In fact, sometimes it's better to not have that enabled while we're doing through this process. So now I'm going to select bricks, press U, smart UV project, hit OK. And there we go, now our bricks have been mapped. And finally, we'll just go ahead and select concrete, press U, smart UV project, and there we go. If we enable this again, we can see that everything's really awkwardly overlapping, but that's OK for now. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save and export this object over to Unity. Okay, so we're in Unity and I can go ahead and just import my object here. As we can see, it's pretty simple flat down flat, but everything's white. So our next step is pretty simple. We need to visit the internet and download some textures. I've gone ahead and already downloaded what I need. For this case, I am on CCO, CC0 Textures. That's my preferred website. Everything's free and it has really good quality. And I have my concrete, I have my grass, and I've got my bricks. I'm going to come back into Unity after I've downloaded those. I'm going to create a folder. I'm just going to name this textures. I'm going to go into my textures folder. And now I'm going to go ahead and unpack my... You can go ahead and extract here your materials. I'm going to take all of this that it's given me and I'm just going to drag it and drop it into Unity. And I'm going to do that with all three of my new materials that I have. Okay, so I've gone ahead and imported my textures. 
If you would like, you can organize these into their own folders. I highly recommend that if you're going to be working on a large project with lots of textures, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just go ahead and leave these all in my textures folder. Now I'm going to go back into my assets, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to title this materials. These folders are not necessarily required, but it'll help you keep everything organized. Now I'm going to right click here and I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to start with my grass, so I will just title this grass. Now I'm going to click on this lock button to make sure that I don't navigate from my inspector window. And I'm going to go back to my textures folder. And here's my ground textures. First things first, you'll have one that is color.jpg, that's what CLL stands for. And this is simply your base color. So I can drag this to here. Now let's go ahead and go back to materials, and I'm going to put this on where my grass needs to be. As you can see, it's a little stretched, and we can easily adjust that with tiling. So if we need more or less tiling, we can adjust it pretty quickly. Sometimes that just has to do, you can also fix that with your UV mapping, but in this case, it was easy enough to just retile and set up. The other thing we can do is we can set our offset to move it around a little bit. This can be nice sometimes. If you need a specific if you want a specific part of your texture showing but I'll just set that back to zero this color here will change the base color of your texture so if I wanted it to be a little darker I could do so if I wanted it to look super green I can do that maybe get rid of that brown a little bit this can be useful but it changes everything in your texture and it's not that great of a feature so I usually leave it on white or even a gray the next thing I'm going to do is get my normal map in. Now I'm going to come back here and your normal map is this purple one here. You can drag and drop it to normal map and it'll tell you to fix it. Go ahead and hit fix now. Your normal map gives you that sort of 3D look and see it gives the shadows something to interact with, making it look like it's not just as flat. This increases the amount of that bumping that happens, your bump map, increases the height of your bump map, or decreases it. I usually leave it around 1, it can, gonna, can, it can get a weird look if you adjust it too much. I don't usually use the bent normal map or the coat mask, although you can play around with those if you want, if you want to do more research on those. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, those are not super useful. And I'll be covering emissive inputs at a later date. The next thing we're going to do is create our mask map. Now, because Skater XL uses high definition render pipeline, we can't just drag a simple mask map over there. Um, we need to take what we have down here and adjust it using an asset that we can download from the asset store. And what that asset store is, is channel mixer and packer. Go ahead and search that in the asset store and you'll find this by Intersido. This is what I use and it's worked well for me so far. So you're going to want to install and then import. And you're just going to click import all. While I'm laying this import, we can go ahead and take a look at the PDF that comes with it. On the assets page, you'll see this button called documentation. That, is, that will bring you to this PDF file, which is basically just a quick walkthrough on how to use the program and what it does. I highly recommend giving this a read, it explains the process and what's actually happening behind the scenes, but for the most part you're mainly going to want this image as a reference anytime uh, until you get very comfortable with using this asset. So I'm going to go ahead and move that to my other monitor so I can use it. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and go to Window and click on this Channel Mixer button, and this will bring up another tab next to our inspector. Now we're going to hit initialize and it will spawn this plain object back here. That's fine and we're going to use that for the time being. It needs to render that to complete its process. So we're going to go into textures and according to our image that we've got pulled up, we need a metallic, ambient occlusion, height, and smoothness. Or at least some of those. And from the textures that we downloaded, we should have been given those. So if we look at our ground, we have a displace, we have a normal, we have a roughness. But if we look at our brick, it also came with an AO, a displace, a normal, a roughness. So 
that's fine. We can work with that. And I can show you in a minute a texture that has all of these and how to, how to use all. So the only one that I need for mine is this roughness here. That's the only thing that came with this pack in this case for the ground texture. And I'm going to drag that to my alpha channel, which is what roughness and smoothness goes. If I had a height, an ambient occlusion, or a metallic, for instance this has an ambient occlusion, I would use those as well. But for this, this is all I need. So then I can select 2048, or even 4K. The rest of my texture is 4K, so I may as well use a 4K output size. And I can go ahead and generate. The larger the file type, the longer it'll take to generate. And once it's generated, you can go ahead and make sure your directory is where you want it. It'll just generate for me to a full, by default it generates to a folder within your project uh, in the channel mixer folder. And I'll hit export. Let me come over here to channel mixer and exported. And here is our new mask map. So we can go back to our material and switch back over to the inspector tab. And then we can go back to our texture, or our new export texture, and I can drag this mask map onto it. And that's all you need to do. You now have a roughness texture, a mask map, for your material. You can turn up this metallic setting if you want. It gives it this interesting metallic reflective effect, which is useful on metals, but not on this. So this texture did not come with these other settings that we would use in the channel mixer. We didn't fill all four nodes. So let me go ahead and import a texture and show you guys what it looks like when you have one that does. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a texture that I created myself in Substance Alchemist. And the starting process is similar. I've created a new material and I'm gonna drag and drop it. And we'll go ahead and make sure that its inspector window is open. And we'll come here to Mossy Ground and I'll drag my color where it belongs. Um, something is definitely messed up in my UV unwrap, but I'm not going to go back and fix it, seeing as I can fairly easily fix it with the tiling. So now I'm going to take my normal map and apply that, and I'm going to dial my normal map back a little bit. Okay, so now we can go back to our channel mixer and we can use, we're going to use all four of these channels this time. So the red channel is your metallic, which I have here, it's black. I can drag and drop that into my red channel. And this texture is only 2K, so I'm actually going to change the output size really quickly. And then the ambient occlusion is going into the next channel. That's this one, I'm going to drag that over. As you can see at the bottom, it tells you what it is, ambient occlusion or AO is usually what that'll say and then we're gonna fill the blue with height which is this one yep and our roughness or smoothness is last and it's this gray one again okay now I'm gonna generate my new mask map and there we go it shows up on our plane it looks pretty weird but that's perfect and I'm gonna export this one keep in mind that if you don't change the name of your image it will overwrite the old one so it's actually it's actually important to change the name from pack to image. I should have done that before. I would have exported it as Mossy Ground. Let's try that again. There we go. Now we have our Mossy Ground. And I'm going to go back to my inspector where my material is. I'm going to drag this on as the new mask map. And there we go. We've got this really nice looking Mossy Ground effect going on. And I can remap my smoothness if I want to, to make it rougher or smoother using this here by dragging these end nodes and then dragging this around. And you can play with that to your heart's content, get the effect that you're looking for, that looks pretty good to me. You can also remap the ambient occlusion that affects the shadowing and whatnot, as you can see in these rocks really well. But I, uh, I like the way that looks. So that's going to be the start to our texturing tutorial. There's a couple other things we can play with. Our surface type and our material type. But for your starting materials, standard and opaque are going to be what you want. If you would like, I can go into more depth in these options in the future. Although I'm still researching them myself. Some of this stuff is important when you're working on materials like plants that are see-through or glass. 
But for starters, this is pretty good looking, and I can go ahead and texture the rest of this out really quick. I would like to note very quickly that a displacement map is actually indeed a height map, I have realized. So if it says disp, that is also going to go in your blue channel. Okay, and there we go. We have got our textured ledge. The brick texture is a little messed up in the UV unwrap if you look closely, especially over here. I could go back and fix that in Blender and then save it back in here and it would update. But uh, I'll leave UV unwrapping to somebody who actually knows how to do it to cover because frankly I'm not very good at it and I would waste your time trying to explain it. The final thing you need to do before exploring is make sure to come to your channel mixer and disable this very large plane from spawning before you export your map. Really quick, I'd like to cover something that is fairly obnoxious that I just discovered. Um, there's actually a compiler error in the channel mixer that I downloaded. This is unfortunate. So you will need to delete everything except for the exported folder when you go to build your asset bundles and then reinstall the channel mixer when you want to fix more textures with masks. This isn't a huge deal, it installs quite quickly and it deletes very quickly, but that's something to keep in mind that you do need to delete everything but the exported folder in your channel mixer. And you can actually export your stuff to your textures folder and then you can delete the whole channel mixer folder instead. Uh, this is not ideal and if I find a better solution I will let you know, but this is what I've been using. I actually have just now, this is the first project I've tried to build the asset bundles on since I started using this. Um, so that's unfortunate, but once you delete that it builds right away and the textures remain. So that's just something to keep in mind and I apologize for that. If, once again, if I, if I find something that is better, I will update this video this description and probably post in the discord about it and there you go you have now textured a brick ledge thanks for watching